In this video, you'll learn how to generate free traffic to your online store with search engine optimization. Now, SEO generates around 20% of the revenue for my seven-figure e-commerce store, and this is exactly what I do. Now, the eventual success of your online store will depend on many factors, but perhaps your cheapest and most profitable sales will come from ranking in the search engines. Now, unlike social media and referral traffic, search engine traffic is consistent and predictable. And if you optimize your site correctly, you will receive a steady stream of targeted traffic that you can depend on for sales, and best of all, it's free. Now, unfortunately, doing SEO is a long-term process, and you won't see results overnight. In fact, you often won't see changes for months, but if you follow the guidelines in this video, you will be well on your way to ranking and getting free traffic to your store. Now, let's start with the basics. Here is a comprehensive list of tips on how to set up your store to give yourself a chance of ranking. Now, everything described in this section is just par for the course and bare minimum. If you don't follow these directions, then you will never rank in search, period. Now, because most new shop owners have no idea how to optimize their sites, implementing these low-hanging fruit SEO techniques should give you an advantage over lesser competition. Okay, so tip number one, make sure all of your internal links point to the same domain. Now, did you know that Google treats www.yourstore.com as a completely different site from yourstore.com? As a result, if you have identical content that is reachable via www.yourstore.com as well as yourstore.com, you are greatly diluting your link juice. Therefore, you have to make a choice upfront which domain do you want to use. Do you want your site to be located at www.yourstore.com or just yourstore.com? Remember, the search engines treat both URLs as separate sites. And if you allow the search engines to index both versions of your site, you will be effectively dividing your page rankings in half. Now, to merge both sites into one, I recommend doing two things. Setting up your Google Search Console properly and then redirecting all links from one domain to the other. The next thing you need to do is choose the right domain name. Now, this might seem obvious to most people, but I still see stores with domain names that are hard to remember or spell or have absolutely nothing to do with what is being sold. Now, here's some guidelines to follow for choosing the right domain. Make sure your domain is easily spelled correctly. So for example, Tim Ferriss's four hour work week is a nightmare because I can never remember whether it's four hour work week with a number or four hour work week spelled out. Tim's last name is a nightmare to spell as well. You also want to avoid using dashes. Domains with dashes often get confused with the same domain without dashes, so avoid them if possible. Keep your domain short and memorable. The shorter your domain, the better, and make sure it's easy to remember and type in. The next thing you need to do is to use proper title tags and description tags. Now, these are the most important things to get right on your site. So for example, on my online store, this is how my title and description tags show up in Google. Now, the title and descriptions are basically the only text that Google shows in the search results, so you better make sure it's relevant. This will not only make for better SEO rankings, but also get more people to click as well. So if you're selling ladies' handkerchiefs, you better make sure you at least have those words in your title tags and your description tags so you even have a chance to rank. So for example, check out the front page results. They all have ladies' handkerchiefs in the title and the description, and we just happen to own the few spots for this keyword. By the way, if you're enjoying this tutorial so far, make sure you sign up for my free six-day mini course right beneath this video. Next thing you need to do is to make your link URLs easy to read. Now the actual product links for each of your pages are important as well, and you need to make them as readable as possible. For example, it's best to set your URL as bumblebeelinens.com slash ladies handkerchiefs. Now by default, my URLs are unoptimized and this is what they look like. Now if you're a robot trying to crawl through a website, which of these sites would you think is more relevant for ladies handkerchiefs? Well, it's obviously the one with ladies handkerchiefs in the name. You also want to write unique content for your products. Now, this might seem like a no-brainer, yet I still see many stores with short product descriptions and just a photo to describe their product. Now, to the search engines, a picture is not worth a thousand words. Only a thousand words is worth a thousand words. Now, if you want some of that SEO juice from Google, you're going to have to write some descriptions or have some text on the page, and it helps your customers and your SEO. Now, for certain products with lots of uses, I would post these other use cases on the product page. So for example, my buddy Neville and Dora wrote about his fingertip lights, which are normally used for raves. Now, once again, this isn't just for SEO purposes. 
great product descriptions also help your customer out and they may have never thought about some of these creative use cases. Next thing you need to do is use a sitemap. Now, instead of relying on Google to crawl all of your pages properly, which is hit or miss, you should tell the search engines exactly where all of your relevant pages are. Now, sitemaps serve this purpose and spell out which pages a search engine should worry about on your site. And this is essential. Most search engines, such as Google and Bing, have a way for you to submit your sitemap directly in the Google Search Console. So make sure you take advantage of this feature. You should also make product videos to get the first result. Now guess what Google loves more than giving users relevant search results? It's giving relevant search results with their own properties such as YouTube. Now because YouTube video results are super favored by Google, you can often dominate the search results by adding a video with a relevant title or having customers submit testimonial videos. Now, the video doesn't even have to be professional. Sometimes even a video shot from your phone will rank. You also want to properly name your product images. Now, did you know that Google also crawls and ranks the images in your shop? As a result, you need to make sure that your images are named and tagged properly. So if you're selling handkerchiefs, make sure the names are clear. So bumblebeelinens.com slash images slash hanky underscore white lace dot JPEG. Basically, you don't want to call your image bumblebeelinens.com slash images slash DSC underscore 867532.jpg. Now, people love images. Google also loves images, and Google puts them in the images results as well as the normal search results, which means you're getting free exposure. Now make sure your alt tags on your images are relevant as well. So for lace handkerchiefs, we'd obviously set the title or alt tags to lace handkerchiefs or lace hankies. Now if your product is well SEO'd, the images are properly made, a video is linked, and you're selling a unique product, then you can potentially dominate the search results. But unless you have the basics down, you won't even have a chance. The next thing I'm going to go over are the principles of keyword research. Now remember, implementing the basic on-site principles of SEO that I just described are only par for the course. In order to actually rank in the search engines, you have to be very strategic in terms of what you want to rank for. Now if you choose a keyword that is super competitive, then your chances are low. If you choose a keyword that doesn't get any search traffic, then ranking for that keyword is useless. But there's a happy medium. And the goal is to choose low competition keywords that actually bring in decent traffic. And over time, by building up a portfolio of content that targets specific topics, you can rank for a series of keywords that will bring in a steady steam of visitors. Now, how do you do keyword research? Well, in general, every single page on your site should be designed to rank for a single topic or keyword. For example, you might write a blog post about wedding gift ideas, and Google might rank you for the associated search term, wedding gifts. Now, when you're just getting your feet wet with SEO, the key is to start with really low competition keywords, i.e. those that you can rank for with relative ease. Now, while you won't get tons of traffic from these keywords, ranking for them will teach you more about SEO than most experts can and will serve as a good foundation for targeting more competitive keywords in the future. Now, I use Ahrefs for my SEO research and will be using that for the purposes of this video. Now, the tool isn't free, but I believe there is a free trial available. Now, before pushing on with your SEO strategy, I'd recommend that you familiarize yourself with the app by taking the free trial and watching the tutorial videos. Now, I'm going to go over how to do keyword research step by step. And step one is to find a viable keyword. Now, now most people don't give much thought to their page titles when they start their online store, and they haphazardly choose a name that describes their items. Now, this is all fine and good, but it pays to spend a little extra time to figure out what people are searching for. So, for example, Let's say that I want to sell wrestling shoes online. By entering in wrestling shoes into Ahrefs, the tool will tell us all the permutations for wrestling shoes that people are searching for online, how many searches per month each keyword gets, and how hard it is to rank for that keyword. Now here's what the Ahrefs results look like for wrestling shoes. Now what's nice about Ahrefs is that it assigns a KD or keyword difficulty score to each keyword which gives you a rough idea of how hard it will be to rank for that keyword in search. Now, in general, a KD value in the 30s or less is desirable. Now, looking at the results, I would probably go for the keywords youth wrestling shoes or best wrestling shoes, as they yield a decent number of searches with a low to moderate level of keyword competition. Step two, create SEO optimized content. Now, one of the challenges of running an online store is that you need content to rank and it's difficult to write a lot of content for a product category or a product description. As a result, ranking in search often necessitates having a blog. Now, 
For the purposes of this example, let's stick to the absolute basics. Here's your simple three-point checklist. Include the keyword within the title, include the keyword within the body of your post, wherever it's relevant and natural to do so, and then you want to include the keyword within a subheader if it's relevant and natural to do so. So generally speaking, focus on your post being relevant to the keyword that you're targeting, and if you can include related synonyms, then even better. Now, given that we're trying to rank amongst web pages that barely target the keyword, this light optimization should be more than adequate. But if you want to ensure the best possible chance of ranking your post in Google, you need to be thorough. For example, if I were to write a post on best wrestling shoes, I would take the time to research every brand of wrestling shoe and create a gigantic encyclopedia of wrestling shoes. Then I would place add to cart buttons to my own wrestling shoes within the article. Now here's the key thing that you need to realize. In addition to backlinks, Google also looks at the following factors when deciding which page to rank. How long the visitor is staying on the page. The more thorough and engaging your content is, the longer the visitor will stay and the higher you will rank. How quickly the visitor is bouncing. If a visitor clicks onto your page and immediately leaves, well that's a bad sign. How readable your content is. This metric ties into the bounce rate and your time on site, but it's in your best interest to make sure your reader consumes as much of the page as possible. Make sure you use line breaks and images to break up the content. Now this sounds trite, but Google does look for quality, and I've seen many comprehensive posts with very few backlinks outrank lesser posts with tons of backlinks. Quality and time on site matters. Step three, promote your posts. Now, even with Google's algorithm updates, links still play a huge part in determining your rankings. Now, this may sound rather intimidating, especially if you have little or no experience in link building. But the good news, however, is that because you are targeting low competition keywords, a few relevant links will be all you need in order to rank on the first page. Here are three simple recommendations for getting you started. Post your posts via all of your Facebook, Twitter, Google, Pinterest profiles. Do some networking. Send your posts to anyone you know who might be interested in it. Establish reciprocal relationships with people in your field and some will link back to your site naturally. And then finally, you want a guest post. Write a guest post on a related topic and link it back to your post. Step four, use internal backlinking. Now, internal links are links within your post that point to pages on your same domain. For example, the following link to my free six day mini course is an internal link because it points to a page on the My Wife Quitter Job domain. Now, internal links are useful for spreading link juice across the different pages on your site and for improving the overall navigation of your pages. In general, your homepage will be the most linked page on your entire website, and it's in your best interest to spread that link equity to your pages that make you the most money. For example, on my blog homepage, I have direct links to my top 10 best articles because I want those pages to rank the highest in search. Now, on my e-commerce store homepage, I purposely link directly to my most popular categories in my shop. Now, you also want to avoid orphaning any single page on your site, and every post should have at least a couple of internal backlinks pointing to it. After all, search engines need to find your content in order for it to be indexed. And if you have a page with no backlinks, Google may not be able to crawl all the pages on your site. Now, currently, my blog has over 600 articles, and it can be quite tedious to retroactively include internal backlinks to every post. As a result, I use a tool called Link Whisper to help me quickly create internal backlinks to all my pages. And here's just a quick tutorial on how the tool works. Link Whisper first crawls every page on your site and suggests keyword-rich backlinks that you can add to your articles. Then, with a click of a button, you can instantly add relevant internal links to and from every page on your website. Now, because I have so many posts on my blog, this tool has saved me a lot of time and has improved the search rankings and indexability of all my posts. Now, if you want to check out Link Whisperer, click on the links beneath this video. Now, finally, you should also use Ahrefs to research specific product types based on what keywords people are searching for. Now, for example, let's say you sell scarves in your shop. Well, guess what? If you target the word scarves by itself with your store, you will never ever rank for anything because that keyword is simply too competitive. But a quick search in Ahrefs reveals that there are certain types of scarves that might be easier to rank for. And using this data here, I would target designer silk scarves or Italian silk scarves or Western silk scarves to have a better chance at ranking. Now, by following all the strategies in this video, you will eventually rank your online store in search. But keep in mind that you have to think in the long term. SEO takes time, so don't expect to see any results until three to six months have passed. 
Rather than expecting or hoping for immediate results, consider all that you do as an investment in your future rankings that are free. Hope you enjoyed this video. Now, if you like what you saw, there's actually a lot more where that came from if you subscribe to my channel below. And if you are interested in learning how to sell physical products online, then click over here and take my free six day mini course where I'll walk you through everything that you need to know to get started in e-commerce. Thanks for watching.